Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with a one day build that is some infrastructure. Oh. It fell from the ceiling. Anyway, uh, hi. <laughs> uh, I am doing a one day build today that is some shop infrastructure. I've just received a new piece of equipment and in order to even think about using it, I have to stop everything I'm doing and make a table for it, make a, a rolling stand. Um, what did I just get in the mail? Well, it's very, 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 very exciting. Um, it is in this black case right here. This is a brand new form 3D printer. Oh, yeah! Um, uh-huh. Yeah, 2021 just got real. We're gonna be printing in resin soon. Um, but this thing weighs like 150 pounds. <laughs> it's got a large footprint. It's got a fairly big footprint. Um, yeah, this is all part and parcel of it. There's all this other stuff going with it. Uh, but uh, this form 3D printer needs a rolling stand with some storage. And I am going to achieve that right now using, I think you can see back there, there's some plywood leaning up against my pool table. That's what I'm going to use to do it. Um, I know, I know the cave looks like a freaking mess, doesn't it? Um, there's a really good reason for that. And it's because it is a mess. That's, that's the lockdown, man. I, 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 nobody comes in here but me. I mean, you know, people come through, but like, I, I, I can't have an assistant here at, at all, right? I'm just alone in the shop. So the rest of the shop has suffered. The shop itself is in pretty good condition. It's pretty refined, but that's because that's where all of my attention is. The rest of the place is a bit of a shit fight. Um, okay, so, uh, right. Here is the plywood that will be this table. I'm gonna go up into the loft and get some casters. This is gonna be a quick and dirty build. I mean, I'm going to glue and screw it so it's strong uh, and triangulated so it's robust and provides a real work surface, but uh, this is not gonna be a refined piece of furniture. Have you ever gone with me up into the loft to get something? I don't know if we have, oh, sorry know that we have. So, let's see here. I have a bin full of casters up here. Let's see. Okay. Um, yeah. Those are too small. Uh, I think it's got to be these guys. Ooh, 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 wait a second. Hold on. There we go. That one's amazing, but I only have one of them. How do you have only, how do I have only one caster? That's ridiculous. I want, I think I want them all to be locking. Three red ones? How do I have three red ones? These are all odd numbers. One should never have an odd number of casters. Okay, there's a locker. Oh, I'm almost out of my stash. Okay. One of my favorite searches on eBay is Caster's Lot. I think that's all I need for this right now. Okay. So. What's next? Now I gotta make a drawing and figure out how big this is. Okay, if it 
actually. At the top of the form sits here, and it's 28 inches high. This is exactly how high. Yeah, I think that's that's about right. I think the table should come to here, which is an inch and a quarter higher than the table height. So, inch and a quarter higher than the table height. Or an inch, 39 and a half. So, Thirty-nine half, and the casters are it's four inches. Yeah, these are four inches. Let's see, the casters are four. Um, that would mean that minus my excuse me top table. Yeah. shelf in there once I figure out how tall it is. Okay. Uh, right? Yeah. Okay. Those are the handles. I need a... Yeah, great. Awesome. Fabulous. Marvelous. The bullets. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Let's get started. Uh, we're going to cut some plywood. This is, uh, let's see here, let's try this. Well, 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 well. Sorry, that might have been a little over the top. I appreciate that. It's just the end of the day and I'm excited. I finished, uh, to the largest degree, the cart for the form printer. Um, I will walk you through what the plan was. Uh, so there's a platform. That's this bottom, this bottom piece of plywood. Uh, through that are four casters, four inch uh, locking casters. There's that. Then these legs are sitting on that platform and this top platform is sitting on those legs. So there's no sheer uh, strength being borne by any screws or, screw, uh, or staples. And this is mostly screwed and glued together. So I'm going to provisionally state that this is uh, a durable, uh, you know, multi-decade stand for the form printer <clears throat> or its successor or a group of successors. I like this handle here. That's um, really key for moving it around. It is, um, <clears throat> you know, it allows it to fit through doorways and things like that. Um, the next thing I need to do, I need help with, and that's lifting the form printer onto this. Uh, so I'm gonna wait until Norm comes around and then he and I will lift it up onto this. And then uh, I'm actually gonna make a couple of shelves in there and you might notice that it's slightly trapezoidal. That was actually on purpose. I wanted it to kind of, it's funny. I was just thinking about making a perfectly upright cart, which is how I've made every cart I've ever made in my life. And I was thinking it'd be really neat if I was just off a little bit, build a little tension into it, make it a little pyramidal and screw and glue it all. Like, I know it's a little funky, but it's the same form factor and it fits into the same amount of space. So, yeah, I did that. Um, like I said, next thing is to get the form on here and figure out what shelving I want. And I may actually make some underlighting here so you can see what's on the shelves and it doesn't just get lost back there. Um, 
I have some philosophy about shelves, but I will need to see what attachments and other stuff there is with the form uh, in order to know how much infrastructure to build out for it. All right. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good finish for right now. I know I said that the next step of this build was going to be lifting the form printer up onto the stand, but I was looking at this. And to be perfectly honest, I had another thought. In my experience, one of the things that a machine that sits on a table like this always needs, always, right? Because you'll be opening the thing up, doing some stuff here, is potentially like a tray here for staging. So I've got a couple of really nice 14 inch full extension drawer slides. And I think I'm gonna make a little uh, a little service access table here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, uh, I think I figured out how I'm gonna build this thing. It's gonna be kind of nifty. I think I figured, I might have figured it out. Hmm. Okay. That's probably a delivery for me. table saw a rabbit out of each of these four pieces. I'm having this conversation with myself and I'm realizing that I've got to do these as bevel cuts, but, and that's, um, ooh, ow, hold on. Got a little piece of steel in my palm here. Gone. Uh, okay. I realize I have to make bevel cuts in this shelf that I'm making, uh, but that's fine because I actually brought my uh, crosscut saw over to the cave a couple weeks ago for the same exact thing, for bevel cuts on my end tables. 
So I will bring it and put it right here and make my measurements. Okay. Making some cuts. I'm working out. Got a bevel cut here. Got a bevel cut here. Now I'm going to work out this next bevel cut. This one. There it is. This is my only other bevel cut. So I got a loader. Already other guys. Uh huh. Make sure I don't cut through my cord. Okay. And yeah, okay, I'm going to cut it ever so slightly long just as some insurance because I don't have many more of these pieces. All right, ever so slightly. Okay. Hey, good. You're long. I like that. I'm glad you're long. That means you're not short. So. A little tiny slice off of this. Right there, I cut it too short. Okay, so I'm gonna reduce the width by a sixteenth of an inch. That will get me where I'm going. Wow. <coughs> Two, three, four. I'm work those out. In the this by a sixteenth of an inch. drop in? It does. That's great. Very pleased. Very pleased. Oh, right. Okay, so now it's about this measurement. Get rid of this thing.
they match. They're exactly the same. That's exactly where I wanted them. Okay, so you can right. Last wear measurement. Where's this one? Which is this? Right. Great. Okay. I'm going to make a little cutty cut on the bandsaw. I'm just going to notch this out there and there. Okay, cool, right, because that's got a berry there. Okay, cool, that I understand. So that is these. Right. down one more sixteenth of an inch for good measure. Like a pinch to grow an inch. So, uh, This is the final test fit. That looks great. That looks really, really, really good. It's a nice little tray. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's group. Let's glue it. So I can remove that entirely and just start off with that. Not yet. Could use some air. Does this reach? Nope.
know what? I'm not going to get that pin there. Nice. Oh, dude, that is great. Very pleased. Very pleased. Okay, so now I think I can put in this guy. solid. That is an awesome table. Okay, let's put in some drawer slides. One of my drawer slides seems to be broken. But I have other drawer slides. Okay, um, what's going on?
to my... stuff platform for being useful um, and I put the put the somewhere there it is it's hiding in plain sight there we go Time to get some help lifting this up on here. I'm gonna go get some help. And I think it's done. I think it's done, man. I think it's uh... I think it's ready to go. So it says. Pull it out of the packaging, get a person to help you lift it, get rid of the cardboard, lift off the cover. There we go. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, look how beautiful this thing is, it's so gigantic. Holy cow. All right, so then it says, okay, so once I pulled this off, I think I want to fold this up. I don't want this to be sitting around getting all dusty and ugly. My God, how do you fold a fitted sheet? I know how to fold a fitted sheet. It's an ancient secret passed down from generations. Okay, um, you pull off the thing and you pull off the tape and then you plug it in. Okay. Oh my God, you get to peel off the, this is the best part. Oh my God. This is the most fun. Cut to some instructions somewhere. Whatever you do, don't remove the blue plastic until you fully blah, 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 blah. at the glimmer of this task.
don't you do that? Sounds like I'm making balloon animals. fingerprints all over the front of this thing. This is pretty. Okay, warning, 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 warning. Oh, right. So it just says, plug it in, and then it'll tell me welcome. I guess... I didn't mean for this to also be an unboxing video, but it kind of worked out naturally that way. I mean, I guess the way I was thinking about it is, if I'm going through the trouble to make a stand for a form printer, I feel like I gotta finish that video with a, with a print, right? Like, this is the problem with my builds is that I, I don't actually fulfill the purpose of the thing that I'm working on. So, um, it's plugged in. Ooh. Oh, there we go. Ooh, ooh, it's lighting up. Ooh. I kept on thinking I was almost done and then I wanted to keep adding features. So I just finished a shelf. It's a lightweight shelf. Uh, I uh, sliced a couple of long slots in here, stapled and glued this all together. It should be actually a really nice, uh, solid, lightweight thing. And I'm about to install it in here. And... Uh, 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 yeah, right. Starting to feel pretty good about this whole thing. That's a 
finished kit. There. Mmm. Okay. It's time, it's time, it's time. It's time to fire it up, it's time to print. I've got a, um, a file. Yeah, I've got a file, it's a piece of a space helmet. Shocker, I know. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I'm about to print it up, let's do it. There's a few steps I still have to go through. I have to register and everything and uh, get the door. All right, uh, yes. Let us fold up the fitted sheet that lives, that this thing lives inside of. They are, the noise you are hearing is because they are roofing my building today. Um, so rest assured that while the noise might be annoying to you, the smell of hot tar is spectacular in here. <laughs> when you, uh, when you're in your late teens and early 20s and you have your first car and you're working on your first car, um, there's this moment you go through for the first like year, you're learning how to work on your cars. And every time you drive past someone who's doing roofing, you're wondering, is that my car? Is that my car? Is that my car? And you like freak out for a second. And then you remember you're driving past and you see like the huge boiler as you're going by. Um, another side note, a friend of mine told me he had roofers work on his house and they were heating their lunch they had tin cans, they had like cans of soup. They were literally like putting the cans of soup for their lunch open on top of the burner that was heating the tar. I don't know if that's OSHA approved. Um, it's not a story that's germane to this build, so I guess I should move on. Okay, um, we're gonna plug this in, we're gonna turn it on, we're gonna register it, and we're gonna take care of all that stuff. Just wanna talk about one thing here. Oh. Did I really? Wow. Um, obviously, a machine like this uh, works best when it is perfectly level. And this machine has a lovely system for establishing level. Um, one is on the little touch screen, there's a dot inside a circle. And when that dot isn't touching any side of that circle, you are level. Uh, there are also uh, four little pips that show you each of the four feet. And if that foot needs to be wound, it shows you the direction with which to wind it. But it is the winder for the feet that I am particularly enamored with, and it is this device. So this, uh, the feet have a large hex on them, and this slots into them here underneath, and you spin it the direction you want to, and you can watch this dot move, and you can watch these things come into level. It's a really nice, fast, intuitive, uh, easy, easy system. I'm impressed. Nicely done, everybody. Next tap to begin tank installation. This is one of the tanks, right? Yep, draft resin, okay. Remove packaging materials and lift tanks from case. Oh, I did that already. I placed the mixer in the front, yep. Align the resin tank, yep. Yep, okay, and then there's the build platform, yep. Uh, yep, I put that in, yep, that's in. Lower the platform lock, it is. Build platform's installed, keep everything clean. Yes, tap to begin the cartridge installation. Here we go, shake the cartridge. Oh my gosh, this is exciting. Oh, look at this, see that? Ta -da. This is Formlabs Photopolymer Resin Draft version two, one liter. Okay, so I've done 
Yep, okay. I've shaken it. Remove the orange plastic covers at the bottom of your cartridges. Leave the rubber valve in place. Okay, I have removed it. Align the left cartridge with the recess and lower into place. Listen for a confirmation sound. I see, it says L. I think you might want to see this. There we go. Uh, align the cartridge with recess and lower into place. Just kind of just double check this. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Back. Remove the orange plastic covers. Covers. There's more than one. There's this one, too. That is another cover. The orange plastic covers, not just cover. Okay. So next. Huh, right. It goes like this, not like that. That was a cover from the top. Bear with me. I'm just, I'm figuring it all out. I'm just double checking, triple checking every single one of my little maneuvers. Okay, that's where the thing slots in and it goes in here. And that's a, that was an installation sound. Next. Align right cartridge. Okay, here comes the right cartridge. Is it really the right cartridge though? Already, my little work table here proving to be highly useful. This is draft version two. Yep, I'm gonna remove that plastic. And we're gonna do the same thing over here, right? Yeah. The same thing over here. Oh, that's another installation sound. Oh, goodness. A lot of trash today. Okay. Next. Uh-huh. So, I forgot to undo that. The, uh, right, 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 okay. I forgot to do that little orange sticker on the top. And now I don't want to pull this out because I, I'm sure it's probably reasonable to pull it out, but I don't want to like leak resin all over the place, so. I'm just going to remove this orange sticker from the top of this. So this is clearly, uh, you push on these two schmageggies to open up. Yep. That's to allow the air to move in and fill the volume of resin that's leaving. And uh, that's the vent caps. Okay, next. My cartridges are installed. For best results, close cap and shake cartridges before each print. Oh, okay, I will do that. Next, um, continue setup online by entering the code on this screen. There we go, that's what I was looking for. Okay. Look at that, it even knows what kind of resin I've got in there. <laughs> that's really awesome. <laughs> I have my I have my file. It's loaded into the it's loaded into the form. Um, it's calculating and checking my model for printability. Uh, 0.2 millimeter. Yep, it's a draft resin 0.2 millimeter setting. That's great. And it looks like it has determined that it's printable. This is just one part of the helmet. It passed the printability. Okay. Print time. I have no idea. It's calculating the print time. Mm -hmm. 
This is really exciting. Eight hours, 23 minutes. I'll be checking back with this guy later on tonight. Oh, that's just around, <laughs> that's just around midnight. Midnight. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Everything's good. So, start a print. I have a lot of plans for this thing. Yeah, I have a lot of plans. Um, like I said, I wanna do a Mando costume this year and I'm particularly obsessed right now with his Ambar, Ambar rifle, what a lot of people are referring to as the tuning fork. That's the rifle with the split, yeah. There's a lot of little, one of the things that's beautiful about the Mandalorian is there are lots and lots of little details on the hand props that are just kind of that thing that Legacy does so well. I, I'm not sure that Legacy uh, Effects did all the hand props. Um, I know that there are some of these coming from other prop houses in Los Angeles, um, but I mean, the, 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 the Star Wars universe, the, the, specifically the Mandalorian Star Wars universe, I'm loving all of the hand props. I love the pram, I love, here is my, um, here is my uh, War Machine paintball metal Mando blaster. This is an amazing kit. I did some blackening on it. It actually even has a functioning trigger. I'm, this thing is a masterpiece. It's a work of art. And it's, uh, War Machine paintball's kit is itself a work of art, but also I really, really like what a kind of old Westy sidearm it is. Okay, I think I've taken up as much of your time as I need to. We're just gonna pause. When you see me again, we'll be ready to go. Okay, uh, I went away. I set this to print. I went away. I kept on checking in online and the interface wasn't necessarily perfect. So I came in today, the next day thinking, I wonder if I've got a print in the printer. And the answer is, I do, I do. It printed, it's very exciting. Uh, I'm gonna open this up and take a look. Ho, ho, ho. Yep. It's got a little bit of a, um, you know, a finish from the resin, but it really does look like it printed perfectly. Yeah, it certainly did. <laughs> we, we're gonna do a story, we're gonna, We'll cover the form printer in another video and you'll get to see time lapse of it happening and we'll run it through its paces. But for this inaugural uh, inaugural uh, look as to how it does on its new portable stand, <clears throat> I, I, I'm very pleased. It's nice, it's nice and solid and we got a successful print. Woo! Hey guys, thanks for joining me for this one day build. Uh, and there'll be much more to come on this beautiful machine. I will see you next time.